Yo, what's going on? It's your boy Potential Unleashed. We're back with another video, Chapter 1025 review. Let's talk about it. On the weekly show and jump cover, we have Zoro, Luffy, and Sanji, another One Piece at the front or on the cover of Weekly Show and Jump. And then we see the cover panel or the cover page. It is more of the top 100 poll people. Luffy and Zoro, they are the biggest on the screen because they were number one and number two. You also see Sanji, Yamato, a Pooh Kid, and a lot. Lot of other characters on there it was pretty good i know last week we had some of um the previous i think like 100 through 50 and this time we have 50 through 100 but let's get into the actual chapter uh, i believe it is titled nobody important which was a lie this chapter was very story heavy instead of action they did have a little bit of action but overall it was generally about the plot which i enjoyed this chapter, to me, it wasn't as good as the last two, but not by that much of a margin, simply because it was different. The last ones had more action-packed scenes with story droplets here and there, and this was more putting some stuff together. We got a heavy Yamato chapter. Yamato is a pretty important, and I love her as a character, um, but the chapter starts off with Usopp talking about um, how he defeated two of the flying six we know he's lying uh people are getting knocked out because of conqueror's hockey and Usopp's like hmm y'all have a weak resolve in front of me it's hilarious but they actually saying is it big mom's hockey that's doing this big mom is fighting law and kids so i can only speculate that kid is also using conqueror's hockey that they're clashing are they using conqueror's coded attacks i don't know can conqueror's coded attacks if people are around them can that still knock people out who knows, which I'll kind of talk about a little bit later in the chapter. We also see other Straw Hats. Nami's talking to Frankie about what's going on. Basically, they're saying, I believe Frank is like head to the live floor because that's where it's going down. Um, they want to head to the live floor because that's where all the commotion's happening, especially because Zoro and Sanji are fighting king and queen. So that's the last people, except for Jack and Pedro Spero. But in terms of not fodder, but important characters, the all-stars, Jack, Queen, and King are all left, and they need all hands on deck because that's where all the Beast Pirates are heading towards so that they can um, protect them and make sure that their fight goes smoothly. We also see Brooke, Robin, and Jinbei. I find it funny. This man, Brooke, is running through the fire. We know that the fire is going on in the cap uh, in the castle because of Orochi. And Brooke's running. He's like, oh, I'm on fire. It burns. So this is what it's like to be cremated. But Robin's unconscious. We also get in contact with Jinbei. Um, Jinbei's like, well, who's fighting Kaido? And then we cut to Yamato. She uses an attack called Ringing Arrow. I'm pretty sure that's the same attack she used to defeat a numbers when she was with Frankie and Momonosuke and all of them and then Kaido he uses attack I believe it's thunderous arrow back at Yamato where she gets blown into debris where she's like hey you're trying to kill me and he's like yeah this is no longer just a family matter you should have been prepared for war but because you embody Odin and you're Odin so much that this has been a hindrance to me and she's like well, what the heck is the problem with admiring Odin and I've seen a lot of people in this chapter putting Yamato over Zoro to me it is what it is. I still have Zoro over Yamato. I can see the narrative of why people say Yamato over Zoro. And I'm not going to say which one is right and which one's wrong. I don't know. I'm not a power scaler. But the issue I have is that Yamato, slight spoilers for what goes on ahead. But Yamato, she's a Conqueror's Hockey user. She has, I'd say, more control over using Conqueror's coded attacks. But Zoro could use Ashura or pre-time skip just fine um i think people are saying because yamato is going on kaido one-on-one -on -one that she has proven more however yamato hasn't gotten an actual attack in on kaido he's been canceling them out really all that damage was previously from the supernovas and also when zoro was fighting kaido one-on-one -on -one for the split moment that he did because kid and killer weren't there luffy was knocked out and law was wasn't doing anything zoro was speed blitz kaido and scarred him and then also Zoro has proven to te block or temporarily block the strongest attack in the series. So I think we're underestimating Zoro and I think it's recency bias that people are putting Yamato over Zoro. But like I said, I think it is what it is. We get a Yamato flashback. Basically, she is being um, held captive. Um, and so Kaido, he goes to check on her where she knocked the guards unconscious. And he's like, is this, did you do this? And she was like, well, how should I know? They just all fell out. And he's like, oh, this is Conqueror's Hockey. And at first, I was like, Yamato's another Conqueror's Hockey user. But 
after thinking about it, when you look at the Pirate King's crew, he technically had four users of Kakurasaki derived from his crew, where three of them could use it at the same time. Roger, Rayleigh, Odin and then Shanks in the future and Luffy is supposed to parallel the Pirate King's crew so Luffy parallels Roger, Zoro parallels Rayleigh, I guess you could say since she admires him so much Yamato parallels Odin and who would be the fourth one? Will it be Usopp because of what he said at the beginning of the chapter he would parallel Shanks because Usopp's the weakest on the crew or would it be Momo because technically Momo was eight years old until recently and Momo was young would he be the one to parallel Shanks and awaken his hockey or conquer hockey later I don't know but this takes me back to what Don Chinja said about going into the new world when he said uh, talking to Luffy you can use Conqueror's hockey too that the new world everybody has and wants to become a king or wants to or has that great resolve so having conquerors hockey means nothing and i was thinking it's not even really that many confirmed users i think it's like anywhere between 15 to like 17 of them where a few of them are dead yamato i mean not yamato odin um roger ace three previous conquerors hockey users they're dead so i was overreacting at first and i think yamato having it's fine i just maybe i have to reread some stuff but i don't know how she has the qualities of a king i don't know what makes her stand above others and what gives her the qualities of conquerors hockey maybe it's hereditary um similar to how luffy has it and we speculate dragon or and garp have it um that ace he had it and Roger had it, and Kaido has it, and Big Mom, she has it, so um, Katakuri, he has it as well, so maybe Odin, um, that is confirmed that Momonosuke has it, I'm not really too sure about that, but basically Kaido, and this is some great parallels for a character that we lo know and love, green-haired swordsman, and someone else later in the chapter, but he basically says, Yamato, uh, i let you be here for a month, and you get one portion of food, or he left one portion of food, there are other samurais there, he left them their swords and said, hey, I know you guys are hungry, but you know what, if you want to swear your allegiance to me, all you gotta do is scream at the top of your lungs, and we basically cut to Yamato thinking that she's gonna die, and someone, he, a samurai offers her food, then later we get an image of, in the color panels, that are, they're not official, but somebody draws them, um, it was a blue-haired swordsman with a bandage over his left eye, I believe, whatever eye Zoro has covered, it was the same thing, where Yamato says, well, who are you? And he says, well, since I'm a defeated samurai, I'm nobody important. Where they gave up their food for a little girl. And look at this parallel. How long did I say Yamato was going to be there for? A month. When you look at when we were first introduced to Zoro, Zoro was supposed to be tied down for a month. He gave up... Um, his will and his freedom for a little girl and Zoro hadn't also eaten in a while when we look at the unnamed samurai who we believe is Ushimaru and we believe he's Zoro's dad or tied to Zoro in some way he was in there supposed to be for a month he gave up food for a girl at the same time so I think that's great parallels between someone of the Shimutsi clan who we believe is supposed to be Zoro's father or somewhere related to Zoro Basically, those guys, they free Yamato Ushimaru, who we believe that is, that unnamed samurai, got a blade and coated it in, uh, uh, in hockey and freed Yamato. And they all, he had a tattoo on the, his back. You couldn't really see it, but I don't, well, you could see it, but we don't know what it was about. They ended up leaving. They said, Yamato, we need you alive because when, in 20 years, when the people that Odin prophesied, Luffy, the Supernovas, the Straw Hats, all of them that are fighting right now, He's like, hey, we need you alive for that fight, so make sure you stay alive. And then we cut back to the present. And basically, we go and cut back to Yamato versus Kaido saying, hey, you took away my freedom. You took away the people of Wano's freedom. There are people who believed in me. You took that all away. And so she's upset. And so they clash a Thunder Bagua clash of Conqueror's Hockey. And that's the end of the chapter. Overall, great chapter. More Yamato lore. And I, a lot of people are like, Yamato is not going to join the crew after this. I think she is. Because a lot of people are like, oh, now that Oda's an adult. Or yeah, Momonosuke is an adult. She's going to stick with him. No, her goal has always been to travel the sea. So I think her going with Luffy makes perfect sense. And I can't wait to see it happen. Um, her and Jinbei get their welcoming party. 
and there are some chapter notes right here that I have to talk about um, and I'm going to read it right here so basically it says Yamato's plight in the cave is a reference to a legend about the Amaterasu I'm not talking about Sasuke and the Uchiha using that you know the flame the black flames but the Shinto sun goddess in the story of Maturasu was pestered by her trouble making little bother Susano dang this is a lot of Naruto stuff the Susano the impenetrable Uchiha defense but whatever until she was depressed enough to shut herself away in Emma Iwato a heavenly cave as a result of her absence the world was enshrouded in darkness and when you look her up you also see this woman and you see a dog a white dog with some yellow and red similar to Yamato's dove fruit the dog dog fruit so I guess that's really important okay so I'm gonna summarize this basically they talked about how um, a bunch of roosters are supposed to lure Amaterasu out and is supposed to return light to the world. Uh, talking about crow, roosters, they crow at dawn, etc. So basically, that's parallel to say Yamato is important to stopping Kaido um, because he shadows the world in darkness. So when Kaido is defeated, it will bring light back to the world. They also talk about Kaido's thunderous arrow attack. It's a reference to Indra's weapon of Vajra, the thunderbolt. It can also mean indestructible, adamant, or diamond. There's a clear intent to contrast with Yamato's attack in terms of intensity of the sound that's insinuated by the names. Kaido's being much more abrasively loud than Yamato. That just means that, well, it's louder because he's stronger than Yamato. <laughs> And then also this Uno Hachi self-proclaimed title in Japanese is the hunter of two fellows. This comes from the raw translation for the Flying Six. The to adapt that this we decided to call him the Beast Hunter to play off the Beast Pirates Pirates as a whole. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I said this last week. I have no clue what direction uh, One Piece is going. Well, let me not say that. I don't know. Like I can't predict what we're going to go next chapter. Like who we're gonna focus on. In all honesty, I think we're done with Yamato and Kaido for right now. Because next week, this is the first time in, I think, what, since Dress Rosa, we had four chapters in a row. Um, I personally believe we're going to be left on a cliffhanger. I really don't know who. I don't think we're going to get Luffy flying Momonosuke just yet. I think that'll happen. And he's going. Luffy's going to go in and save Yamato and be like, hey, you got to be healthy to join my crew or something like that. So I don't think we'll get that. It's either, I, I'm firmly, I'm calling it, it's either going to be one of three things. It's going to start off with talking about the cap, uh, the flower capital. They see Onigashima coming in. It's going to be um, Luffy and Sanji versus uh, Queen, but Luffy and Sanji, Sanji and Zoro versus Queen and King. Or it'll be Law and Kid versus Big Mom. They talked about her this chapter. We haven't seen that in a minute. But let me know your guys' thoughts about the chapter in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, hit the notification bell so you guys never miss out on a video. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and TikTok on the screen in the description below. Thank you guys so much, so much for watching. And don't forget to unleash your potential.